The basic principle of taking on any big job is to break it down into smaller jobs. This applies particularly to the question of dealing with your clinging to yourself. As the Buddha said, of the various forms of clinging, this is the big one. Other teachers, he said, recognized that there was sensual clinging and that there was view clinging and habit and practice clinging. But because they didn't recognize doctrine of the self-clinging, the people in that particular teaching would not gain awakening. So this is the crucial job. And the problem with the doctrine of the self is we have many selves. Sometimes they work at cross purposes, sometimes they're mutually reinforcing. But each one is a strategy for happiness. And you think of all the times we've been looking for happiness in our lives. Almost every action we do is for the sake of happiness. We've got lots of selves, and they have teeth. They're very prof protective of their particular strategies for finding happiness. And so you have to learn how to take them apart. You look at the Buddhist teachings as a whole, and it's, they're all about taking things apart. When he talks about suffering and the causes of suffering, he starts out with just two principles. But then as he traces it out, you get into dependent core arising, which is very complex. And it's for a purpose. He's not just showing off how subtle he can be. He wants to show how he took his sense of self apart. And he's giving us tools for taking our own selves apart. On the one hand, he talks about the different kinds of aggregates that we can create a sense of self around. There's form, feeling, perceptions, fabrications, consciousness. That gives you five. In each of those cases, you can either identify directly with the aggregate, or you can think that yourself is someone who has that aggregate. Or that somehow you're in the aggregate, or the aggregate is in you. So that's four times five. That's twenty. Twenty possible ways of thinking about yourself. And then on top of that, your your sense of self is very much embedded in those other forms of clinging. You are very much a creature of your place, particularly as you perceive your place. And that has to do with view clinging. You're very much a creature devoted to pleasures of various kinds. Most of them are sensual. And that relates to sensual clinging. And you figured out all the different strategies for getting those pleasures, for getting what you want. That's habit and practice clinging. So you can't just take out the self on its own. You have to look at the world in which this self inhabits. You have to look at the pleasures for which it's designed and the type of actions it feels it has to get engage in. Only when you deal with all four kinds of clinging can you really get down to the big one, because they're all very entangled. It's like you have a whole ball made out of knots, and you have to untie each little string that's been tied into a knot. And it may seem daunting, but if you try to just untie the whole thing all at once, it doesn't work. You have to take them apart piece by piece by piece. So one of the reasons we practice concentration is to give the mind a good, solid foundation where it can do this kind of work. Give it a place where it can stand. So it's separate from its other clingings. This is a habit and practice that you're going to be developing. The practice of concentration, the habit of getting the mind to settle down wherever you can, whenever you can. And you come with a, a right view, the fact that you can do this. It can be done. Suffering can be brought to an end by attacking the cause. 
and also a view of yourself. There will be a provision of self that you hang on to that's capable of doing the work and will benefit from doing it. So you hold on to those ideas and use them to take everything else apart. So work on your concentration and get it strong. And you begin to notice as the mind starts wandering off away from its concentration. Either you can go into the thought world that's pulling you away, or you can watch it from the outside. And when you watch it from the outside, you can see, oh, this is a perception, this is a fabrication. That's precisely the skill set that you're going to need in order to deal with your sense of self. Don't feel that you are inside yourself. See this yourself as a series of activities. And you can watch them from the outside. You say, oh, this particular idea goes with that particular sense of the world and that particular sense of what should be done or this particular pleasure. And you can tease these things out. And that way the job isn't so big. If it's just me, 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 me is a problem. That me can get awfully inflated. But if you look at it as a series of activities, so there's this choice and there's that choice. This habitual way of doing things without really thinking about the choices. You look at them and the question isn't, what's wrong with me or how can I get rid of me? It's simply, what's going on here? And where is the stress? Where is the suffering? When you take things apart in this way, then the job becomes a lot more manageable. And you can do it without a lot of self-hatred. Sometimes you see people who really hate themselves loving the idea that there is no self, thinking they can just get away, do away with any sense of self and not have to deal with it just by defining, defining it out of existence. But the Buddha didn't teach you to hate yourself. After all, he says, whatever is not yours, let go of it. It will be for your long-term welfare and happiness. All of this is for your welfare and happiness. He wants you to have a sense of concern for your happiness. You know? To really have goodwill for yourself. When you can develop that attitude, then when you're stepping back and analyzing things, it's not with a mean sense or a harsh sense. You're doing it because you see, oh, I'm hurting myself unnecessarily here by holding on to these things. Why am I doing that? And so you look at the other clings that are associated with that way of acting. And you begin to tease them out, and you say, oh, it's because of this idea, because of that notion, that I thought that I was going to get ahead by acting in that way, making those choices. Now I see that they don't really make much sense. When you see that you have the alternative, that you don't have to do them, and you're better off not doing them, you don't have to tell the mind that things are in constant stress, well, not self, or whatever. The mind lets go. So we're dissecting the sense of self, again, not because we hate it, but simply because we see it's caused a lot of trouble. But there is a possibility for happiness. So you have to learn how to step outside of yourself, and you do that, one, with the concentration, and two, developing the right view. That you have many selves. You've been I making and my making for who knows how long. And 
like somebody who's been knitting sweaters for her whole life. The house is piled with sweaters. So much so that if you try to get out of the house, you can't get your, make your way out because sweaters are everywhere. We have to take them apart one by one by one. And finally you get to the door. So don't see it just as a big mass of yarn. See it as individual sweaters. You can throw them out, throw them out, throw them out, one by one by one. And that way you find your path. If you let the sense of this house is just filled with yarn overwhelm you, then the whole idea of taking the sense of self apart seems impossible. It's too big and tangled, too amorphous. But if you can see it as specific actions, specific choices, specific aggregates, specific ways of clinging, you can pull them out, pull them out, pull them out one by one by one. And you find that you will arrive at the pathway, the opening that lets you out. So learn how to break things down. A thought comes up in the mind, recognize it as a thought. And the thought of me, me, me comes up, say, well, that's just a perception. And you ask yourself, to what extent? In what way do I hold to that perception? And as you get interested in those questions, you don't have to take on the self in capital letters. You find that you're simply taking on manageable problems one by one by one, breaking the problem down, breaking the job down into manageable pieces. And that's how it gets done.